there, everybody. My name is Marcus Aceves Lewis. I'm here with my co host, Kadisa Muhammad, and Dr. Everett Penn, here representing TAPS Channel. Um, I go to St. Constantine School. I'm a rising senior. We're here to talk about a few problems in our city with the police force, um, just hashing it out, really just talking about what matters here in our city and how we can connect a greater bond between ourselves as a youth with our police force in this city. Hello everyone, my name is Kudisa Muhammad. I attend the Elevated Places and I'm 16 years old. And like my co-host stated, I'm here to um, bridge that gap between police and youth and help to form those important relationships. Next to me is Dr. Everett Penn. Hey everybody, just saying hello to you here. We're gonna have a great discussion today in order to get the youth perspective on what we need to do as our city is going through George Floyd and all other questions related to finding the youth perspective of what needs to be our next step. Good morning, uh, I'm Liam Trykoff. I'm from Lamar High School. I'm also 16 years old. And as previously stated, we're here on a mission to find out how the police can better relate to our society. Good morning, my name is Michael Pelton. I'm a junior at the High School for the Performing and Visual Arts. I'm here today to talk to Dr. Everett Penn to just voice my opinions about future legislation and about what we can do to support the police in our community. Let's, let's get right to it. We know we are just a few weeks out of George Floyd's death. Right. Yes, we know that uh, we've seen the strong yeah. thoughts of people and there's been protests, even a few riots. Now we're getting to the point of solutions. We're getting to the point of what are the answers to make for a better relationship between youth and police? If you were speaking to the Houston Police Department, as you are right now, I need to hear, what do we need to think about? What does the Houston Police Department need to do to make for a better relationship between youth and police? Right. Well, I'll get started. I think it's important that we humanize police officers. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when you see a police officer, you see a gun and you see handcuffs and you think, oh no, I'm going to jail. However, if we have more community outreach, I think that's important with um, police officers so that the community can see that these police officers are not just here to arrest you and take you to jail. Yeah. They're human beings. They care about the community. They want um, to bridge that gap with you. And once um, I think that is seen, once that bond is built, then there'll be more trust between the community and the police, which I think is really lacking right now. So get those police cars out the car, get them with community, right. being seen as an individual and not just the people who are in that big police car and wear that blue uniform. Absolutely. Right. All right. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, I believe seeing them in a new light, seeing them definitely, as Kadisa said, as just as human beings. I like they the tie they, also. I just want to. I appreciate. Yep, yeah, we have great taste. Father's Day tie. We got it. All right. Um, but yeah, just you know, being there because they have the mentality that they want to go home as well to their families. You yes. know, we want to. We have families. They have families. They're just doing their job. Seeing them as humans and seeing them as somebody else, just just trying to do their job, is definitely a great thing to do. Um, and just just bridging the gap, honestly, seeing them um, as we should. Okay. Um, just treating them accordingly as we would want to be treated. But what if I see them as the people that constantly beat me up, right. say mean things to me? That's all I've seen. Right. Yeah. So, Dr. Dr. Everett, I noticed that you said the people. Mm -hmm. Perhaps what we also need for our police officers is more individuality mm -hmm. and more, more individuality and more opportunities for community action yeah. so that police officers aren't seen as something to be tolerated, uh -huh. but rather as someone who's there to help and someone who's there contributing adding to, to the community, being a part of the community, lifting up and adding to the community. Yes, sir. So okay. when, most pe when most people see a police officer, what they don't look at is the face or mm -hmm. the, per the idea that there's a person behind it. They more look at the blue uniform, mm -hmm. the handgun, the handcuffs, the, uh, the flashlight, the baton. So we have to find a way is to both educate the public in that the 5,300 police officers we have serving for us in Houston, not only do they, not only are they part of a organization as a whole at the Houston Police Department, yes. but they are also individuals and it is the individual who's having the contact with you. It is the individual who is All right. going to talk to you, give you a ticket, arrest you, or help you 
if you're in harm's way, not the police department because it's the individual who's also having their life on the line and yes. contributing their entire life to a life of public service. So we have to find a way to let the public know that even though there are bad or uh, police officers who shouldn't mm -hmm. be police officers, mm -hmm. yes. and even though there are lots of lots of perfectly justified stories about police officers who do take it too far, mm -hmm. who do illegal things, there is also a large amount of police officers who are here to help us. Okay. And if we give them the same respect that we ask them to give to us, then we will achieve that respect we're asking for. Because what I, what I find what a lot most people are asking for is the police should respect us, the police should treat us with dignity, the police should not put us in any danger. But then we are asking for all of that, but are giving okay. nothing in return. Absolutely. Us as a public. Exactly. Ah. We have to treat them with the same amount of respect that we asked from them. Those are some nice things you're saying here. I think, oh, if I may. Go ahead, please. I think, like you said, these are nice things to say in theory, and in a perfect, a perfect world, that would be carried out. Mm -hmm. However, as you stated, if I look on the internet and I see four police officers mm -hmm. standing on the neck of a mm -hmm. defenseless black man, like he was not posing a threat, and I see that, and that's the image that's constantly been running mm. through. Naturally, when I see a police officer, I'm not going to think, oh, my protector. Yes. I'm going to think, oh, weren't y'all the one? Not necessarily that individual, but the uniform. Yes. Weren't you all the ones that, were, um, that um, murdered that man? So I think that, um, I lost my chain of thoughts. Well, I think with that, I think with that, it takes a lot of accountability within the police department to disassociate from those individuals that mm -hmm. are corrupted and that are not treating the citizens as they should be treated. Okay. It takes a lot after an incident like that, or honestly, before an incident like that takes place, it takes a lot of accountability and you know corrective behavior to step in when you see an, a, a police officer with those sorts of tendencies, physical um, attributes. And, and um and mannerisms that lower towards anger um you see that and i think as a precinct just come together to hold each other accountable to things like that and even though you know there's a tight-knit community in the police force to have each other's backs and right. not be snitches I right guess, um, Get snitches. There, there is a lot of there's a lot that, that needs to be done inside as a police officer to uh, to um, protect the, per the the police officer right. and also protect the people that the police officer comes in contact with. It all starts in with that, you know, that contact. All right. Um, so you said inside. And suppose I'm a police officer. I can say, hey, when you're in your high school, when you're in lunch and somebody does something, I'll just say something. Like, Those are great at that table. And next thing you know, a food fight begins. Hmm. Are you all snitching on that person? Are you snitching on that person who started through the grave, who started that? Are you doing that as high school students? Should we expect officers to do that? It depends on what we're asking for. Because All right. the police department and everyone in this country are asking for trust. They're asking mm -hmm. to be liked. Mm -hmm. They're asking for a degree of respect between okay. the public and the police department. Protection and safety. Now, if the well. police department says our people are too tightly knit, they're not going to snitch, and they can't be asking for the respect and the trust of the public. Whoa, okay, all right. I don't feel safe, um, supposed to be being protected by a group of people who are saying, well, you know, I have a bond with him and we have this tight knit relationship. So if he steps out of line, then I'm gonna protect him. We can't have that. That's not mm. okay, that has to be outlawed. You are laying the hammer down now. 100%. That's where individuality really comes in though, because we, do need officers to rely on each other for backup, but we also need to let them know that integrity and morality cannot be taught. They cannot be trained. Oh. When you know that you need to stand up for someone, when you know that you need to tell someone to get off someone's neck, it's important to do so immediately okay. and feel that you won't be targeted by other officers for doing so. All right, so we've got a message for those other officers out there. Stop, mm -hmm. do the right thing. Just as we as citizens are trying to do the right thing, Officers have taken the oath. This is their job. Do the right thing and call out that officer who is not following the protocol and the behavior of training of what to do and what is right with another human being. I like that. Well, this is the TAPS Challenge, and this is what we're going to do this summer. We're going to give a voice to youth. 
about youth and police issues. So a lot of people are gonna be in the chair. We're gonna take this camera out into the community, make sure that voice exists. So this is Dr. Penn, Tapstown, looking forward to seeing you this summer.